that I've heard of, let's call him Mike, took a $300 real estate shoot. Cash payment, handshake deal, easy money. His drone clipped a chimney, thousands of dollars in damage. The homeowner sued and Mike had to pay out a pretty big settlement. Now, Mike had his part 107 license. He had a $2,000 drone. What he didn't have was the 20 minutes it takes to set up the correct legal business structure. And that cost him more than he would have liked. If you start taking money without doing what I'm about to show you, you are gambling with your savings, your car, your house, who knows what could go wrong. The good news, this takes less time than studying for one practice test. And it's the difference between a guy with a drone and an actual business owner. Today, I'm walking you through the exact setup of LLC versus sole proprietor. The real answer, not the Reddit answer. The fastest way to get a business bank account without getting rejected and the 2026 insurance requirements that just changed that you need to know about before taking your first paid job. So let's get the biggest question out of the way. Do you actually need an LLC? Now I know that every Facebook group has a different answer and here's the truth. A sole proprietorship is the default. You don't file anything, you don't pay anything. You just start working and report the income on your personal taxes. It's free and it's simple. But here's what it means in 2026. Your drone is a flying object with spinning blades. If it malfunctions and hits a car, a window, or heaven forbid, a person, you get sued personally. Not your business getting sued, you. And that means your assets are at risk. Your house, your car, your bank account, there's zero separation. Now, an LLC, limited liability company, see the liability thing, creates what lawyers call a corporate veil. Sounds like something in Game of Thrones, but it's not, less interesting. It's a legal wall between your business and your personal life. If your LLC gets sued, they can only go after business assets. Your house stays yours. Now the cost. It can range from $50 to set up in somewhere like Kentucky to $500 in somewhere like Massachusetts. But just kind of depends on your state. Some states have annual fees, some don't. But compare that to paying a settlement out of pocket. That's the insurance policy. So here's what I did. I went directly to my Secretary of State site website. You can just Google whatever your state is, LLC filing. And I filed mine myself. It took me maybe 10 minutes. Most of these services online that charge anywhere from 300 to 500 to form your LLC, they're literally just filing the same form that you can do yourself. Sorry, LegalZoom. I'm exposing your secrets. You'll notice there's no affiliate link. Now you do wanna do a little research first. Make sure that you've looked to make sure that business name is available through your state. There's often a simple way you can search that as well. And I also recommend that when you're naming your LLC, you also know that it's available as a, a domain and, and a .com domain. I see so many people file their business name and then realize that domain is taken. And that's just a recipe for confusion. If you've got one business name and a different website and your emails are different and then it's just a mess. Let's keep it simple and streamlined so people can get that name recognition and you have consistency. You gotta start it right though. So just check first and then get rolling. Okay, so now that you've filed your LLC, you need your EIN. This is your business tax ID number. Think of it like a social security number for your business, except they don't send you a little blue card that you have to keep track of for your entire life. Go to irs.gov, search apply for EIN and do it yourself. Don't pay somebody $50 for this. It's free, it takes literally 90 seconds get the number instantly. You're gonna need this for two things, opening your business bank account and for filing taxes. Now, the bank account, this is non-negotiable and it matters more than you might think. If you mix personal money and business money, like buying groceries with your business debit card or paying for drone repairs with your personal card, a lawyer can argue that your LLC is fake. You're gonna lawyer. It's called piercing the corporate veil, also very Game of Thronesy, right? And just like that, your personal assets are back on the table. So keep them separate from day one. Every dollar you earn through the business goes into the business bank account. Every business expense comes out of the business account. You want a paycheck? Well, talk to your accountant first or bookkeeper. I am neither of those things, nor am I a tax consultant, but you can transfer the money from your business to your personal. That keeps things clean. Now, when you go to the bank, you're gonna need three things. Your articles of organization, from your LLC filing. That sounds complicated, but it's easy. There are templates online. You can go to ChatGPT, have it draw them up for you. Super simple, okay? You also need your EIN confirmation letter and your driver's license. And it's never a bad idea to call ahead and ask what they need, just in case there's some extra hoop you have to jump through. Also not a banker. Also consider setting up your accounting software at this time. This can be something as simple as, if you do this now, come tax season, you'll thank me. Instead of digging through receipts for five days, you just click export and you're done. All right. This is the part that confuses everyone, but it's also where most beginners get disqualified from good 
jobs. Insurance. In 2024, you could get away with on-demand insurance. Pay 10 bucks for an hour of coverage, fly your drone, job done. In 2026, if you want to work with construction companies, government contracts, or commercial real estate, they require an annual policy with minimum $1 million in liability coverage. And here's what's new in 2026. They're asking for proof of whole insurance. That's coverage for the drone itself. If your $3,000 drone falls in a lake or gets destroyed in a crash or attacked by an eagle, whole coverage replaces it. It's not required by law, but more and more clients are requiring it before they allow you on site. So what does this actually cost? For a full professional setup, $1 million in general liability plus whole coverage for a drone valued at $3,000 to $5,000, you're looking at about $600 to $1,000 for the year. That's $50 to $85 a month. And I know that sounds like a lot when you're just starting out, but here's the math. One construction mapping job can pay from $500 to $800. Two jobs and your insurance is definitely paid for for the year. And without it, you can't even bid on those jobs. Now, I have a friend who thought he'd skip insurance and just be careful. He got his first big opportunity, which was a $2,000 roof inspection for a commercial property company. They asked for a certificate of insurance. He didn't have one. Do you think that looked professional? No. The job went to somebody else. He left $2,000 on the table to save 700 bucks in annual premiums. So don't be that person. Get the insurance. Treat this like a real business because your clients are definitely treating it like one. And I'll link some insurance resources below. I recommend calling around and seeing what has the best fit for your needs and your budget. Now, here's a perspective that most people don't actually get. Setting up this stuff today can feel like a pain. I get it. Forms, fees, calls to banks, more forms, money at the door. But here's what you're actually doing. You're building an asset, not a side hustle, not a gig, an asset, something that has value, something you could sell, something that can hire people and operate without you flying every single job. When a client looks at two different drone pilots, one a sole proprietor with a Gmail email address, and one who's an LLC with a business bank account, professional email, and insurance, they're not seeing two pilots. They're seeing a hobbyist and a professional, and they're paying different rates depending on how they see you. I've seen companies choose to work with a pilot who submitted a proposal for $600 instead of going with the guy for $200. Same deliverable. The difference, though, is that the professional presented themselves as such. They sent in their sent a, prof a proposal from a business email, they had a certificate of insurance attached, and they got the job because the business wants to work with other professionals. Perception is pricing. So here's your homework. Don't overthink that. Just execute. Make sure your name is available. File your LLC. Get your EIN to get to the bank. Get set up. You can also apply for a business credit card at that stage, and then you've got some liquidity to buy that next drone you know, or invest in other things that will help grow your business. And if this video helped you to be inspired to protect your assets instead of gambling with them, hit that like and subscribe button. It helps reach other pilots who need to see them. Now, next week in video three, we'll talk about the value creation mindset. This dives into why most drone pilots fail in year one and how to shift from flying for fun to solving high value client problems. And please subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss that. Drop a comment and tell me what you're going to be naming your business. I read every comment. I'm Sarah. Set up your business like a pro. And I hope you get time to fly today. I'll see you in the next one.